Thank goodness you're here. I'm simply going to accept that I'm never going to understand this. It's too hard. Well, what are you working on? Well, my teacher told me to study these crazy charts, but they don't make any sense. I mean, look at this. It looks like a, like, mosaic or something. That? No, that's the chart of the nucleus. See? You already lost me. I simply can't figure out how to do this. It's not really that bad. See? Check this out. It's actually pretty easy once you get the hang of it. The chart graphs the number of protons versus the number of neutrons. The vertical axis corresponds to the atomic number, Z. Atoms that are side by side on the chart are isotopes, because they have the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. The horizontal axis shows the number of neutrons. Atoms that are stacked vertically are isotones, since they have the same number of neutrons, but a different number of protons. This chart is a valuable tool when it comes to radioactive decay. Each isotope on the chart is color-coded for its predominant decay mode. Using the chart in the predominant decay modes of isotopes, you can make a decay chain to see how an isotope decays and becomes more stable. Also, the chart can be used to find extremely stable elements. The magic numbers for N or Z are equal to 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82, and 126 and correspond to the closure of major nuclear shells, similar to closed electron shells. If an atom has a magic number of both N and Z, it's what you call doubly magic. An example of this can be found by going across 8 and up 8 to find oxygen 16, or going across 20 and up 20 to find calcium 40. Thanks, Garrett. That makes a lot more sense now. I can see that this chart is definitely more than a multicolored one. Now, all I need to figure out is how that radioactivity stuff works. Look at radioactivity next time.